What is a multivariate probability density function, or PDF? Well, it's a function of two random variables, x and y. And to be precise, it's the probability that random variable x lies in this range and random variable y lies in this range. Now, for more information on single variate PDFs, check out the link in the description below. We're going to now see that this is a generalization of the single variate case. So not just having one random variable, but two means that we can plot this function on a two dimensional plane. So the X and Y plane. So let's consider an example to try to visualize this function. And let's consider a, an example of a cruise liner, for example, where they allow people to go on the cruise who are between the ages of 18 and 35, for example. And let's say we, that, so that's our one random variable is the age of the people on board. And let's say the other random variable is the time that it takes for the people between when they board the ship and when they first go to the buffet. So that might be uh, between might take two hours. The buffet doesn't open for the first two hours of the cruise, for example. Let's assume that. And let's say it closes after six hours of, uh, of the start of the cruise to get ready for the next meal, for example. So let's assume that there's an equal number of people on that cruise liner between these ages. And I think it's fair to say that they would have taken random times to go to the buffet. And it's probably the case that an equal number would have gone at each of those times between the second hour and the sixth hour. So if you randomly pick a person who's on the cruise and ask them what's their age and how long was it until they went to the buffet, then you would have an equally likely chance of getting any person within these ranges in both directions. And that means that we have a flat probability density function. And let's see what that looks like. And in this case, it is a box with a flat top. So if you randomly pick a person, there's an equal chance of being at any location in this X, Y plane within the boundary of this box. That's why it's a flat top. It's an equal probability. And it's zero outside there. So what is the height of this box? Well, the area under a probability density function equals one. So if we integrate, we will find here that the volume of this box must equal one. So in this case, where it's a flat topped box, we've got this dimension times this dimension must be the inverse of the vertical dimension for the overall volume to equal one. So 35 minus 18 times six minus two, take the inverse of that and you'll get the height so that the overall volume equals one. And that value is 68, uh, one divided by 68. So let's think about how this multivariate PDF is related to the individual PDFs for X and Y on their own. And you can find those values by taking the multivariate PDF and integrating in the other direction. So for F of X, so the PDF of X on its own, you can find that by integrating over dy. And likewise, to find the PDF of y, you would integrate over x. So let's think about on this picture what's going on. Well, if you want to look just in this plane here, which is the plane of the paper here, and have the x here and the PDF there, then you integrate in the direction of y. So for every value of x, you integrate in the direction of y. What does that mean? That means add up all of the area that corresponds to that value of x. So for each value of x here, you're integrating, so you're adding up in this direction, all of the function that relates to that value of x over all values of y. And you do that for each of the values of x, that will give you this function here. So that's how the two dimensional function relates to the individual PDFs for the individual random variables. There's another equation we'll be interested in, and that is how the joint PDF relates to the conditional PDF. So here's the equation here, just follow standard conditional probability equations where the joint PDF equals the conditional PDF of X given Y times 
the PDF of y. So what does that mean? It means the probability of getting that value of x for a particular value of y times the probability of actually getting that value of y in the first place. So what we might do is to try plotting some of these functions for this example here. And here are three functions that we'd like to consider. Let's think about what the differences are between these three functions. So let's first of all plot the first function. So what is this one here? This is the actual joint PDF, but where you've set the value of y to equal three. So what is this? This is a slice through this two dimensional function where the value of y equals three. So if we go along this distance here, it will be zero, then it goes up to the uh, value of one on 68, then it comes back down after you get to 35, back to zero. So this function here, it goes between 18 and 35 and has the height that is one divided by 68. So that's that function there. What about this function? Well, this is the function where we've integrated across all values of y. So again, if we're going, we're going in the x direction here, we're seeing if we're integrating across all of y for all these values of x here, the value integrated over all y will be zero until we get to 18 when we're adding up in this direction all of the PDF that corresponds to x equals 18 and 19 and 20 and so on and all the values in between. And then after we get to x equals 35, again, you can see we'll be adding up zeros. So again, this function has the same shape as this function in this uniform case. But now the difference is, because we've added up all of the area in this direction, the height will be a different value. In this case now, the value will be one divided by 17. Because we've added up all of this between two and six in this direction. So the height now is higher for f of x. The area, importantly, the area here equals one. Uh, this because this is a PDF for X. So the area equals one. Whereas over here, the area did not equal one because this was not the whole PDF. This is just a slice through the two dimensional PDF. So that's an important difference between these two functions. Their shape is the same, but the height is different because they are different functions. What about this conditional PDF? Let's look at the equation up here. We get the conditional PDF by taking the joint PDF and dividing by this univariate PDF for y. That's how we get f of x given y. So let's think about what that means here. Well, this one here, so it's this function uh, here where we've taken this one here. If we're doing it when y equals three, it's this function here divided by this function here. This function is actually just a number because it's a function evaluated at y equals three. So this will be this function divided by that number. And so again, it will have this shape because it's this function divided by a single number. So in this particular example, where there's a uniform distribution, these three functions have the same shape, but they have different heights. The two on the right are both PDFs. The one on the left is a slice through a joint PDF. So it's not actually a PDF. It does not have an area of one. That's the difference. Let's think about another example where it's not uniform and where we're going to see different shapes here and really try to understand this more generally than just this example. So here I've drawn a different multivariate PDF where the values go from 20 to 100 for both of the random variables and where the probability is different for different combinations of X and Y. So it's not uniform. There's now here clearly more chance, the values higher along this diagonal line. So there's more chance of having the same value for X as Y compared to other combinations of X and Y. And one example this might correspond to would be the tire pressure in bicycles where, for example, X might be the front tire pressure of the front wheel and Y might be the tire pressure in the back wheel. And you've got different types of bikes 
For example, mountain bikes have big tires and low tire pressures, and road bikes have thin tires with high tire pressures. And what this graph here shows is that whichever the bike, you will have a high probability of having the same pressure in the front and the back tires. Uh, that's why that's, this is, corresponds to this peak along the diagonal. But it could be, for example, that the front tire was at a lower pressure than the back tire. On this diagram here, that would be, let's say, the back tire was at 100, so you're along this line, but the front tire was, had lost some pressure and was at 80. And if we go vertical from there, we'll see there's a lower probability of that happening compared to finding a bike where the front and back tires are both at 100. Okay, so now let's think for this multivariate PDF, let's think of what these three graphs will be. And to make this easier to visualize, I've uh, done this on the computer and we can see here that I have got a computer generation version of the picture that I've drawn here on the right hand side. And I can spin the picture around and you can see the 3D shape of this multivariate probability density function. So now let's think about these functions here. Let's start with this function here, which is a slice through the multivariate PDF. So here we have three different slices through this multivariate PDF. One of them is at 20, one of them is at 60, halfway along, and the other one is at 100. So these are just three different slices through this multivariate PDF, exactly the same as this one here, was a slice through the uniform multivariate PDF. And we can see that now these shapes are different shapes depending on the slice. And that's different from the case when the multivariate PDF was uniform, which we have down in the bottom left corner here. Now let's look at the individual PDFs for X and Y in this case. And here we have them. And one thing that's immediately obvious is that they don't look like a slice through this PDF. So when we had the uniform distribution, these functions had the same shape. But now with this non-uniform multivariate PDF, the shape of the two individual PDFs is quite different to the shape of the multivariate PDF. They are not just slices through here. Remember, you have to integrate all the energy in the other direction to get these two functions. And it's a good thing to think about is to why this with a peak in the multivariate results in these smoother shapes for the individual functions in this case. So hopefully this has given you more insights into the multivariate probability density function. And if it has, uh, give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Check out the description below where you'll find a link to a web page that has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.